everybody and welcome to today's video and in today's video I will be discussing why Democrats should want Donald Trump to want to run again. Now I understand that um, Democrats, majority Democrats at least, despise Donald Trump, but this is why they should want him to run again. So I'm going to go quickly fill out a map, um, or a regular map, and then I will get to talking. So um, Dem is going to fill out all the safe states, Washington, Oregon, California. For this, New Mexico and Colorado will probably be safe, I'm not quite sure about the margins, but um, They'll probably be safe, and we're not quite, we're not being too um, too careful with the margins for this. Obviously, the um, entire Northeast, except for New Hampshire, New York, Maine statewide and first, Illinois. Um, we're gonna characterize Virginia. Okay, and now let's go characterize all the Republican states. I'm gonna characterize Kansas. I know it's probably more like a likely state, but I'm gonna characterize Kansas anyways. Um. That's safe. And same with Alaska, likely, but I'm characterizing it as safe. Now, um, this is essentially just a map leaving out all the swing states, but um, Donald Trump got rejected this election season. He lost, um, or he lost Nevada. He lost Arizona. He lost the entire Rust Belt. He lost New Hampshire. Lost Georgia. He, um, Joe Biden did was able to flip. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Now, um, the thing is, I don't see Democratic voters that voted for Joe Biden, even if they voted for Donald Trump in 2016, voting again for Donald Trump. And here's the reason. Um, I understand that tr the Trump campaign has had a lot of successful attacks against Joe Biden, but voters will see, especially if Joe Biden loses the Senate. If Joe Biden does not have control of the Senate, which he is not looking like he will, um then his presidency will basically be four years of nothingness other than bipartisan bills, which will most likely still get passed. So it's going to be a lot of nothingness. And even if he does control the Senate, um, if he somehow manages to win both Georgia Senate races, it still won't be that much, it still won't have that much in it. While a lot of the Democratic base are progressives who won, um, won progressive bills passed, they want Medicare for all, they want tuition-free college, um, a lot of the Democratic leaders are not. Nancy Pelosi is a moderate. Chuck Schumer is a moderate. Joe Biden is a moderate. Kamala Harris is in between. She's a progressive, but she's not a social or like a Democratic socialist as AOC or Bernie Sanders um, is. So I don't really think that much will happen. I don't even if he doesn't end up controlling the Senate. I don't think that he will pass too much, um, too many progressive bills. So I think honestly. If this ends up happening, and this is assuming that Joe Biden does run again, or honestly, Kamala Harris, I think she can do about as well. I think that all these areas, he, uh, in Nevada, I think that he'll win all of these. And Nebraska's second. I don't see him losing any of these, especially, cons I say he, the Democrats losing any of these, especially, as I said, it'll be a very bland presidency. Um, as LTE has been talking about, or he was talking about, the Democrats really cried wolf in 2016. Um, to minorities saying that Donald Trump was going to turn their whole life around, and he didn't. And this is what the GOP has been doing this year. They've been crying while saying that Joe Biden's a socialist. And when voters see that there is that there's no socialism happening um, over the span of these four years, they are going to turn on Donald Trump um, at the end of the day. So, at this point, with this map, I think that North Carolina is probably a Democratic state if Donald Trump runs again. Um, he was barely able to hang on to it, one by about a percentage and a half. And I think that if they um, can turn up black turnout or raise black turnout in the South, which they're doing very well, um, they are raising black turnout, on, or not even black turnout, they're just raising turnout in general over. But black turnout is definitely the, um, or the black um, demographic group favors the Democrats the most, um, or the heaviest, heaviest, most heavily, I guess would be a better way to say that, um, I don't know how the grammar works right there, but, um, yeah, and I think also, like I said, um, or it's gaining an electoral vote, which I've said this in other videos, higher population tends to lead to, um, making states be more liberal, and I think that at this point, if Donald Trump ends up running again, unless they run a bad candidate, then, or not even a bad candidate, or yeah, I guess a bad candidate, if they are a candidate that's not moderate enough, because voters, um, voters in North Carolina still rejected Joe Biden after, and they probably won't after seeing that there's not going to be 
that not just seeing that there won't be any socialism. However, if you were to run a candidate like AOC, who calls herself a democratic socialist, there's nothing there's nothing to prove to them that, oh, wow, she's not going to be a democratic socialist. And in fact, I think that if they were to run AOC, it could even be a likely. I don't think it will be. I think it'll be a lean or maybe a tilt. Um, I think that at the moment, if Joe Biden and Donald Trump run again, North Carolina's in the Democratic call. Now, I want to look at these um, states. Here, I'll actually just throw this on um, Target. That's a high school Target. I just want to go look at these states. Um, Texas, Florida, Ohio, Iowa, and Maine 2nd Congressional District. Now, these states all voted for Donald Trump. Um, I believe all by 3% yeah, by all, all by three or more. I want to talk about which ones I think would have a, actually have a really good shot of voting blue, and which ones I don't think would have a good shot. Um, first off, I don't think that Iowa is going to go blue, even if Donald Trump runs again. Um, the state's a pretty conservative state. They have two conservative senators and a conservative governor. And um, I voted with Donald Trump by 9% in 2016, 8% in 2020. It only shifted one point to the right um, or to the left over the last four years. Even if Joe Biden doesn't end up being a socialist, even if they see that he's not implementing any socialist policies, I still think it could be a leaner likely state. Um, so I don't think that Iowa will be terribly competitive. Ohio, that's a bit of a different story. I think it'll be a lot like Iowa. I don't think it'll go blue, but I think it has a better shot at going blue. Especially if Donald Trump and Joe Biden both run again, um, but they would need they would need activism. They would need a lot of those white voters to flip, and I don't necessarily see that happening. So I'm gonna label that as a red state. Um, now as you can see, these final three, I think that Maine seconds a lot like them. Um, like Iowa and Ohio, it shifted drastically to the right four years ago when it voted with Donald Trump. However, I do think that it could vote blue. But it voted with Donald Trump by seven percent. I think that if he run, if he were to run again, it would vote with him by lean margins, not or even tilt margins. Maybe I think that it would be a lot closer, but I still don't think it would be close enough to the point where um where Joe Biden will be, or yeah Joe Biden or any Democrat. Like I said um just now, I it's any Democrat really. Most Democrats could probably make it more competitive, just not um competitive enough to the point where it will probably flip. Now, these last two, Florida and Texas. Um, these states are very similar in where they are right now, where they have been in the past, and where, they are in the, where they're going to be in the future is very different. It's very strange. They're two southern battleground states, arguably the two biggest battleground states in the Sun Belt, um, both with very high Hispanic populations. However, Florida is shifting to the right. It, has, it already had a Republican governor and two Republican senators. But Trump won here by more than he did in 2016, while Texas is shifting dramatically to the left. I think that Texas could easily be the next Democratic stronghold. Actually, well, I take that back. It's probably going to be Georgia, but Texas will probably be four or eight years slower than Georgia, but it'll be... They're, they're going to be the next two Democratic strongholds. Anyways, um, I think that Texas could easily be the next Democratic stronghold, which is why I think that if Donald Trump runs again, he'll very nearly hold on to Texas. But I think that there's a very, very good chance that Joe Biden um, hangs on or flips Texas if Donald Trump runs again. I think that Joe Biden won't win it, like I said, if Donald Trump runs again. But I think that if Donald Trump does run again, if they can keep on raising turnout in the state of Texas, because Texas has a very high black population. It's not the percentage, like the electorate doesn't have a high percentage of black voters, but they do have a very large black population. A lot of that is just because Texas just has a very large population. But, um, if they can raise her now, especially also among those Hispanics, people feel like, or people are acting as if Joe Biden lost the Hispanic vote. He didn't. He won, like, two-thirds of it. If only Hispanics were to vote, Joe Biden would have won in a landslide. He would have won by, like, what, I'm trying to do the math in my head, um, like, what, yeah, 20%. He would have, it wouldn't even have been, oh, I, sh I should have known that. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long, um, but... He would have, he would have destroyed Donald Trump. And if they can continue to raise Hispanic and Black turnout in the state of Texas, um, and Donald Trump runs again, there's a very, very legitimate possibility that it votes blue. There is a very good chance. I would say that it's a toss-up. Honestly, if that, if this were to happen and turnout was to be raised, I would label it 
I wouldn't label the toss-up because I don't really do toss-ups. I like to try and label them one way or another. But if I had to, I would, or honestly, if I was able to, I would probably label it a toss-up. Like it would be incredibly close. I would say Donald Trump would have had would have 45 and 100 or 55 and 100 odds at winning to Joe Biden with 45 and 100. It's gonna be it's gonna be really close. But like I said, Donald Trump would have to run again, and Democrats would have to um, get voters out. I'm not sure that that will happen, but if it does, it's definitely going to be very competitive. I think that Florida, um, Florida is another state that I think could actually go off of its trends, go, um, vote away from its trends, and could actually vote blue. Um, a lot of these voters were scared because they were, came from Central America and Cuba, where socialism had, um, been implemented and then failed. But I think after they see, like I said, that a lot of these policies won't be socialist policies, um, they're not gonna... They're not going to um, vote red. A lot of them might still vote red, but I'm, I don't think that they'll vote red on the reason of socialism, which is a reason that a lot of these voters did vote for Donald Trump. I don't think that he'll win the state, or I don't think that he'll lose the state, Donald Trump, that is. I think, he won up, I think he'll win at my very narrow margins. Um, but I still, I, still think, I still think that it will be a lot more competitive than both 2016 and in um, 2020. So yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe, and um, I'm actually working on a really, a really nice series for you guys. It's, it's funny because I had come up with the idea, and then I found out someone else already did. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just give them credit when I make it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that when it eventually comes out. It probably won't be out for a pretty long time, but when it eventually is out, um, it'll probably be pretty good. So yeah, um, I hope to see you in my next video, and bye.